Alright, I'm back. And today we have a leaf blower here. Low compression. So, um, I already took it outside and I tried... It, it already had gas in it here. And it seemed... Smells fine, looks fine, so I went ahead and took it outside just to see if it'll run and I uh, it popped off uh, and then I turned the choke to half choke uh, and it, it just kept popping off and popping off it was it was kind of it just wouldn't didn't have enough power to start so um, that's all I have but um, I mean that can only mean low compression right but uh, well, let's see if we can fix it, I guess, right? So, uh, looks like, uh, for this one, we're gonna have to tear the whole thing apart. Ay, ay, ay. Alright, um, let's see here. Looks like we have four for the rewind, and then one. Might have to take this off. There's a bolt back there. You know what? We might be able to take it off from back here. I'm not sure. I'll back it up a little bit. See if I can center the camera. There we go. All right. I'm not sure which way I should take this off from. I should take this tag off. Yeah, I am not sure. You know what? I think... I think I want to take it off from this side because the spark plug access is right here. So I might be able to get to it from this side here. Ah, I'll just start taking it apart and see what happens, right? Alright. Move the snowblower here in my way. Alright. Let's see. My guess would be T27. Nope. T25. Yep. Alright. So I'm going to take the rewind off first. That's a little sticky. So. I'll have to service this too. There we go. Huh. Looks very familiar, huh? I'm gonna cut that tag off. This tag's bugging me here. I guess someone brought it to fix someplace, and the place that I Brought to fix, probably said 200 bucks to fix it, 300 bucks to fix it. Customer probably said, huh, it's not worth it, I'm gonna throw it away. So I guess that's where I'm at now. It's, yeah, I have it now, thrown away. So, isn't that fortunate? All right, well, let me grab a thing here parts holder. There you go. All right. No, no, these are Allen head. No, that doesn't fit. Huh. No. Four millimeter? Yep. Now I need my adapter. There we go. Alright, what should I start taking off? Well, I need to take this guy off. The This off here. And I think I would have to take this whole shroud off too. Alright. So, I went around the back and I took the screws for this out. 
and I took all the screws out on this assembly here. So I'm gonna see what comes apart now. Oh. I guess this, that's good. I may not have needed to do that. That's just the, the, blow, the blower housing here, so. Floor. Looks like I'm gonna have to take that one out and that one. And it looks like this orange thing is one whole housing here, so. And yeah, I'm sure the handle, handle's probably gonna come apart on me too, but. Work with what we got, right? Oh, I'm gonna have to take this out. You can tell I haven't worked on one of these before. Oh, there we go. Hmm. Oh my gosh, I missed the bolt. Did that last time too. <laughs> now it comes apart. I guess the muffler shroud comes off too. Bonus. Yeah, classic Husqvarna engine. Man, they got a big spark plug boot on there nowadays. I guess I can take the uh, throttle link off. Hey, they're making the spark plug boots real big nowadays, huh? That's so you don't rip the boot off, because now what's happening is the boot inside of there on the uh, the older models, the 2010s and whatnot, the cheaper ones, they, they put a smaller boot on, and what happens is people, they get angry when they try to take these off, they just pull them. Instead of, instead of twisting, you're supposed, to, you're supposed to twist them when you take them off, you're, but instead people just pull them right off, and they pull out that metal piece inside of them, too. So what they do is they make the, the whole boot, rubber boot, bigger so it's easier to twist off. That's what they do on these nicer blowers. Alright, looks like we got an RCJ6Y. Let me get a uh, tool for that. This is one of the weird things. I don't know why. Half, because half of the uh, stores I go to, they don't sell the three-quarter inch, uh, the three-quarter inch uh, spark plug socket. Uh, uh. They advertise them as 19 millimeter, but three quarter inch socket uh, works for me. Oi! Well, I guess I fouled that. I'm sure that was dr bone dry when I, before I started, but again, I said I was outside. I probably fouled that myself. Take a look inside of that cylinder, huh? I can't see too much. That's probably just because I'm... I can't really see the uh, much from here. I mean, the cylinder doesn't look bad. I mean, best case scenario, it's just the rings I could replace them, right? They're pretty cheap. I looked online. All right, I think I'm going to take the muffler off now and look under there. Oh, boy. Those holes are deep in there. I don't know what, what to use to take those off. Oh, those are like T30. Ay, ay, ay. The tools you have to have to work on these, you wouldn't believe it. Yep. And then when I take this muffler off here, the reason I'm taking the muffler off is because what happens is these two-stroke engines get scored here. Uh, when, uh, when they have low compression, usually it's caused by scoring in the, uh, the piston cylinder. And that scoring uh, 
you know, doesn't have compression. It doesn't, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? It makes your machine lack compression. And uh, that scoring is caused by, it could be caused by over revving your machine because it's a leaf floor, it doesn't put much of a load on it. Uh, it could also be caused by putting not enough two-stroke gas in it. Uh, because the two-stroke gas has oil in it, if you don't put oil in it, it's going to score up your piston and blow up your machine. So let's see here. What do you think, good news or bad news? I can hardly see in there. Oh, wow. That's not scored at all. I'm impressed. I'd, I'd show you, but I, I could barely see in there myself. Yeah, that's not, it's not scored at all. The piston's fine, the cylinder's fine. I bet you I, I've seen this before. On these uh, Husqvarna blowers, on the Craftsman ones too, they only have one ring on them and that ring is so thin. Uh, schmutz, crud tends to get up in there and the ring gets stuck in place. So that ring doesn't uh, move very well. It doesn't actually create a good seal. So, um, well, well, it looks like I'm taking the engine off and apart. Now I might have to take this off. Looks like there's bolts. Actually, I may not need to because right here it looks like there's a big long thing that bolts come in from here behind the fan, but there's also bolts right here that I might just be able to take that whole engine off. I'm not sure which route to go, to take the fan off or just take those bolts off. You know what I'm thinking? I bet you this housing, this is an assembly here, um, just this... Uh, the shroud here for the, I guess the fan shroud. And I bet you the bolts, there's bolts behind here too and that just takes the whole engine off. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that fan off. See where that gets me. Oh. These fans can be a pain to get off sometimes. You know what? I think sometimes these are left hand threaded too. I could try to go the other way. Yeah, I'm getting it off. Yep, left hand threads. Because on some blowers, the uh, the whole fan is on the other side. So some blowers, it's left hand threaded. Some blowers, they put them right hand threaded so the threads don't back out when you're blowing. Because that would be unfortunate. Yeah, it looks like we have three Torx bolts here to take the whole engine off. They're not T30. I guess those will be T27. Nope, they're T25. That means I could just use this. Alright. This should... Remove the whole engine. There you go. One bolt. Two bolt. I'm gonna have to hold it for this one.
free bolt. Well, my engine didn't fall, so I guess that's good. Oh, my, uh, that fell off. Looks like my engine is not coming off. Darn it. So I might have to take those bolts out after all. You know what? Two of these are torques and two of these are hex. I'm going to take out the hex bolts. Looks like the Torx bolts are just holding this together. I think I'm going to take out the hex bolts to start. I'm not saying I'm not, not going to have to take those out anyway. I probably will, but... One thing at a time, right? There we go. Oh, that was plastic. I don't know. Huh. Oh well, put it back together if it... Okay. There we go. Oh, now I gotta take the carburetor off. You see that hole? The hole, um, I can pretty much take the whole thing out. But the air cleaner assembly is leaving me in there. I can take, take the switch out too. I gotta take the switch out because the coil kill wire is connected to this. I could do that or take out the coil wires and I'd rather not take out the coil wires so I'm gonna leave that hanging. But I'm gonna have to take the carburetor off now rather than later. All right. Looks like we got uh, our nut here. I like this uh, air cleaner design. They did a good job with it. They got a good air cleaner too. They're not foam, they actually do I'm not sure, but that's kind of like a wool material. And then they have the rubber grommet around here, which seals it nice. I like that. Looks like we got eight. Yep. So there's two eight millimeter bolts in there for the air cleaner. That might just end up taking everything off. My blower almost went for a uh, fall there. Right there. Bolts in the thing here. There we go. All right. Move you up a little bit. You can see a little better. There you go. All right. So this shroud should come off. There it goes. And that choke lever too. Oh, everything just came off. Okay, and the engine just fell. All right, well, there's that's what a leaf floor looks like with no engine on it. And here's what a leaf floor looks like with nothing else on it. Looks like here, from here, I'm going to take the piston off. Oh, wow, this is a weird design. Man, they really jammed this in here, huh? So normally, to take these pistons off, there's four holes in the top of here, right? And you stick your one of these Torx drivers right in the hole to screw out Torx screws to take the hole cylinder off right but here this cover holds in two of the bolts so the bolts are actually down here at the bottom and there's two bolts behind here too right there and I can't get to that with the oh no it's way back there I can't even see yeah way back there and I have to take this cover off in order to take this cover off I have to take the flywheel off and in order to get the, uh, that off I gotta take this nut off and uh, that's just a lot more work. And I, I, uh, I gotta take this intake off here. That's these two bolts. Man, 
This is as poor design than I thought it was. Good job, Husqvarna. Well, I'm gonna start with the intake. And that intake's just pressed in there too. Like it's just these two bolts holding it in and it's just pressed in there. It's not tensioned in there at all. So that's not good for sucking in gas. It's not coming out. Is there more I'm missing? Yes, there is. Seriously. Torques. Like there's torques and hex bolts screwed in here. Why don't you just make them all torques? You see there's a torques way down here. Ouch. And that's holding this in too. Take that gasket off. Or just leave it on there, that's good too. That's cool. It's still not coming off. Oh, there it goes. Either this is good and I'm not used to it, or it's cheap and I'm also not used to it. Now, looks like... Looks like the flywheel's gotta come off. There we go. There, hopefully this isn't seized on there. <laughs> yep. Fantastic. Great job. Oy. I don't want to take push to shove here. There is also a bolt behind this flywheel that I have to take off. That's good. So I'm not sure what I should do here. Hmm. All right. Hammer and a chisel. Pops it right off. That's good. Oh, the key. I don't think there is a key in here. I think it's just built right into the thing. Yeah, it's just. There would be a. Sometimes there's a key slot, and sometimes they're built right into the flywheel, those keys for these two strokes. And yeah, it's built right in, so I don't even have to worry about that. Now, two more bolts there, and what do you know, they're torques. Whatever my torque socket went. Here we go, torques. And there's my four bolts at the bottom, finally. That took forever.
Ay, ay, ay. All right, well. There we go. Yep. It's wet in here. It does not look terrible. I mean, it's typical for a, uh, a, uh, a used, oh my gosh, the whole thing's coming off. I never would have expected that, like the whole thing just came right off. I mean, it's got typical wear for a leaf blower, but the ring is, I mean, it looks pretty stuck. Yep, the ring is stuck. It's not moving at all on there. So, um... I think I'm going with the blowtorch route here. I'll tell you what, I'll try it without the blowtorch first. And I'm gonna try to pick out right here that's where the the uh, the center is right there, where the little hole is, where the uh, you know what I'm talking about. But I want to try to pick it out with one of these picks, and hopefully not my finger. And if this doesn't work, I'm gonna heat it up. I don't think I moved it at all so far. Yeah, that is not moving. All right, I am going to figure something else out. All right, my situation I'm running to here is um, I'm gonna use a blowtorch, but the carbon that's on the piston might start it on fire. So I'm gonna start slow, and if it starts on fire, uh, Maybe I'll just take it outside and let it burn off, because it's good for it anyway. Oh, that bearing's a little noisy. I'll get rid of that. Well, I'm going to try it, right? It's not starting anything on fire. Vice grips too. There we go. No, no, this is fine. I hope it, uh, unsticks this piston because I don't know what solution number two is going to be yet. Usually I just can just tap them right out but this uh, ring is a little bit smaller than I'll just tap something out with. The heat might expand the whole ring out too. That'll be a bonus. Seems that it's burning off some excess gas down in the bottom of the cylinder. You, hear, you see the little puffs of flames? That's the fun part. Yeah, right there. Yeah, there. <laughs> I wonder what that is.
I don't know, it seems to be doing something. Once I get this origin, the uh, the the point right here unstuck, I can easily unstuck the rest of it and hopefully don't break it because I'm notorious for breaking rings. I like to uh, break rings. All right, we're gonna call that good enough. Maybe I'll let it cool down a little bit because it's uh, it's smoking pretty good. All right, give it a few will, give it a few minutes. All right, I think that's good enough. It's smoking less now. You know what I'm gonna do? I want to be able to hold it, so I'm gonna put a glove on, so I don't burn my hands. Oh yeah, there it goes. Whoo! Yeah, the ring is coming out, but I would really like to try my best not to burn my hands. Oh, that works. Oh, that works. Get the other side out, maybe? Oh, you see this, this, this. Stuff just flying out of it now. And I'll try to get my thing down in there. There we go. And just work it around it slowly. And I'll get rid of these now and I'll just use the, this. There it goes. Work around. Should I take it out or should I quit while I'm ahead, you think? Because it's pretty gunky inside of that thing there, but... I mean, the, uh, the ring seems to be unstuck for the most part. No, never mind. It's, uh, it's sticky on that, on, over on this end yet. So I'm going to try try to grab it again I don't want to try to use the channel locks too hard because I don't want to score the piston because that will make it lose compression yeah it's still pretty gunky Maybe put some lube on there. Maybe that will help get it out. Yeah, it's pretty stuck in there. Right, there we go. Here, I'm just going to take the ring off because I want to I wanna lube it up. Here, WD-40. Spray a little of that on there. I hope this doesn't smoke it up. It did. Oh well. Whew. Yeah, oh well, I like the smell of WD-40. There we go. All right, our ring is off. Now I'm gonna clean inside there because it is nasty inside that little hole there. Maybe I'll do Maybe I'll try to torch off the uh, carbon in there, or I'm trying to think of what what can get in that small gap there. I could just spray carb clean on it, and then paper towel, and then uh, WD forty. I'll try that. You know what? Still a little hot. Do you think it's going to smoke up with the carb clean?
Ah, oh well, I'm spraying it anyway. Watch your eyes. All right, maybe I'll get in there with my pick and paper towel. Just dig out some of that black stuff in there. Because, I don't know if you know this, but it's not supposed to be black in there. So, that's always good. It's black in there. I mean, really the ring's not supposed to be in there anyway, you know what I'm saying? It's supposed to be lining the piston, but I'm just doing it because it did it before. I don't want that to happen again. The reason I'm using carb clean and not brake clean is because I have more carb clean. And I'm sure someone someone can answer my question out there, but I don't know why I would use brake clean over carb clean because they seem like the same thing, right? Aren't they just mixes of uh, acetone and then other chemicals? For all I'm concerned, I could just use acetone, but that doesn't come in a spray bottle, a spray can. Oh, sorry, bumped ya. All right. I think I am going to put the ring back on. It looks a little better in there, but I'm just going for making sure that it runs correctly. I'm going for compression. And I think I will get compression if I do this here. And if, it, if it's still stiff once I put it back in, I'll take it off. Maybe I'll put it in the ultrasound. Yeah, it's still pretty stiff in there. I don't know, tough call. Oh, actually, that's... Yeah, I think I'm going to put this in the ultrasonic cleaner. And get all that carbon out of the, uh, the little slot in there. Because I don't want to put this all back together just to have to take it back apart again. So... Yeah, I'm going to give this a date with the ultrasonic. Alright, my decision is I'm going to do the ring, the piston, and the whole crankshaft because those bearings too. I'm not going to take the piston off, uh, even though it's pretty clean. The, the, uh, the, one of these bearings is a little noisy, so I want to clean the bearing up, then I'll put some either grease or lube in and clean up those bearings too. Ultrasonic. It's a little bit cold yet, but I'm trying to conserve my time here, so I'm going to see how it does cold. I'm going to pop open these caps so that the uh, there's caps on the side that cover the bearings. I'm going to open those up a little bit to so it can get in the, in the bearings. And I took the ring off again. So I can get around the piston, hopefully, and the ring I'm going to put in there, too. Cook it for a half hour.
Um, let's put it in. So we can put it in like that. And the ring go in like this. Alright, I know it says 13 minutes, but I cycled it through again because it didn't seem uh, very done. So I have it going for uh, well, um, about 45 minutes now, and I want to check on it. Let's see how it's doing here. I want to see if uh, see if the uh, the gunk is uh, out by now. Hey, it looks a lot cleaner than it did 45 minutes ago, I'll tell you that. Here's the ring. The ring looks a lot better. I know it's hard to see on that camera, but... A little better. See, that ring's nice now. And the piston itself... That looks a lot cleaner. There's still junk in there, but not nearly as much as there used to be, and it's all just leftovers. And that little groove I'm worried about. I'm not worried about the outside. I'm just worried about that little groove in there. Okay, I can't hold this any longer. It's really hot. All right, well, I'm going to put it back on. Man, this thing looks B-E-A-utiful compared to when we first put it in. The ring is not bad either. So, oh, and the, uh, one of these bearings I could just pop off here for you. That bearing is a little less noisy. It's still got some noise in it, but here, I'll put some WD-40 in it. Fix it. See if that slowly starts to help it. There. I can do that with the other one too, but yeah, it really helped it, man. Did a good job. Put that back on. Put the cap back on. Some of this in the other bearing. I know the other one's noisy too. Here we go. There, that bearing's a little less noisy now. So that shouldn't be an issue anymore. Everything's looking a lot better on this. Alright, I'm going to put the ring back on. Here, wait. I'm going to put my WD-40. Here. I'm going to put my WD-40 in here. Yet. Other side too. There we go. And the ring. Probably can't see it, but oh well. There we go. All right. Um. Gotta find the groove. There's the groove. So I'm gonna try not to break my ring. And if I do, you'll don't worry. You'll hear me curse. There we go. Oh, yeah, that's better. We're getting at least 110 pounds with that. Wow. That glides on there. See that? I'm not, I'm just turning the ring right there. You see right there? Watch it right there. You see that spinning right there? Oh, yeah. We're getting compression with this bad boy here. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. I'm putting it back together now. All right. So, 
we can stick our uh, assembly back in here. I have to figure out which way it goes because uh, the little groove on there has to go towards the uh, one of these sides has to go towards the flywheel and the other side does not. So let's see here. It looks like... No, let me figure this out. Alright, looks like it'll go in like this because the intake is here. It faces the carburetor out that way. That means the blower is that way and the flywheel is the other way. And the key slot for the flywheel is right there, so that should be good. And here's our flywheel. Maybe I'll put a little WD-40 on that key just so it doesn't seize up. Actually, I just want to test fit this now because I'm not. That fits all right. There we go. So, put it all back together now. All right. Uh, you know what? This would help. All right, so if I'm lucky enough, there should be a taper in here, so I shouldn't have to use my, so I shouldn't have to like use any sort of ring compression like tool. I, my hopes would be to just push it in there and hope for the best. So again, the, so it's gotta go this way. This is gonna be tough. I'm not gonna be able to show this cause it's, I gotta see. If I can't see, this ain't getting done. Sorry. There it goes. There. There, it's in. And it, it glides pretty nicely, too. I'll have to dump a bunch of oil in there. But, here, can I feel any compression? Well, I mean, it's going to be a little hard without the thing on, but... Yes, there's more compression. All right, this is gonna go back on. This only goes on one way. I guess that's good for me, right? Like that. Yes, because those were the bolts that hold on the blower housing. Yes. This is the right way. All right. There's four bolts here. You know what I'm going to do. I'm debating whether or not I should put Loctite on these or anti-seize. Let me clean these bolts off first because they're a little dirty. Loctite. There you go. Put a little Loctite on each of them. Just, I'm gonna say that because almost, it's almost never the case when these guys get stuck. I, I, I can 100%, if I wanna get these bolts off, I'm getting them off. They're not breaking. Like I never broke one of these bolts before, so that's why I'm going Loctite. I have seen these bolts come loose, rattled loose. Normally OEM, there is just Loctite on these bolts. But I guess not this time. Normally, I thought Husqvarna usually does put the Loctite on their stuff, but I don't know. There. One. Three more to go. The gaskets were high quality on this too. They were proper, uh, what do you want to call them? I don't know what to call them. I'm not sure if I put this bolt in correctly. Oh yeah, that's in right. All right. What was I saying? 
I don't know. Oh yeah. The gaskets uh, on this guy are a higher material. They're not just like a uh, carburetor gasket. They're more like a proper O-ring. But they're custom shaped. So that'll seal more. It'll seal longer. It'll seal better. It might even seal more than just a regular plastic gasket, which I like. All right. Oh, you didn't torque them down. Yes, I did with my impact. Yeah, I feel some compression there now. Yeah, there's definitely compression. Alright, so now what? Do we have to get this shroud on now? Huh. Tell me if I'm doing it wrong. So I would have went on just like that. Now the bolts match up. I'm done for like that. Put the cap back on my Loctite, huh? That stuff can make a mess. Oh. Wrong side. Now, which bolts did I use to put those on? Most of these bolts have the same thread. So I am just going to figure it out. Looks like it's Torx, these Torx ones. Oh yeah, yep. It's those. My guess it would be those three, yep. I'm gonna use my Loctite again because I don't want these bolts to come loose. Running low, gotta go to the Home Depot. My favorite store. There we go. This is blue stuff, so this is the medium strength temporary stuff. So this is what you put on if you want to take it off again. They have the red stuff too, that's the permanent stuff. That's what you put on if you never want to get it off again. Like, uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, <laughs> exhaust manifolds, right? Never get those off again, let's just get those on. Start my bolts. Lug them down. With my very accurate torque wrench. Torqued. Now I want the flywheel. And put some put some lube on these paws too, because the paws, because they look fine, but pull start was giving me some issues. I'm just gonna lube them up anyway, even just in case. Because they, they they just might not be anything wrong with them, but Pull start was a little sticky when I tried it. Popped it off earlier, but yeah, those are the best looking paws I've ever seen. A 
little dirty. Not that that matters. No one's going to see this. That's better. Alright, so we have that uh, that key in there. We've got to match it up with that slot right there. Yep, that's good. All right, where's the nut? It's like this one. Nope. No, that one goes on the, oh, here we go, it's this one. Did I have a washer on there? Remember if I had a washer on there? I think I did. I'm gonna put some Loctite on this one too. I wanna put it right on the shaft. So I usually like it on the male end, I usually works out better on the male end of the thread. You don't want to put it on the, uh, the nut because it, it'll it just uh, go right through and not get where you want it to get. So I always like to put it on the uh, male end. All right, 13. Wrong size. Oh, that's the 12. 13. There we go. Tight. Great torque wrench. Why don't they advertise those as torque wrenches? Should. Alright. Now what? I guess I gotta put that intake back on. This really bad engineered intake. Looks like we have, you know what, might have been these bolts for that. See, look at me remembering what I put where. There we go. It goes the other way, like this. Going about like that. And just slide it down. I gotta make sure the holes line up. Inside of there, there's a pulse line for the carburetor, for the diaphragms to pulse, and then the actual intake. And they all fit in good. It's like a big boot. Actually, you know what? Earlier, I said that's a terrible design. That's actually a pretty good design. So it's just a a big o-ring as your intake boot, really, sealing it versus, again, one of these gaskets just sealing it. So I have, I have mixed feelings about this design. I'm not sure how to how to go with this. I don't know. Should I put Loctite on the plastic? Ah, heck. I'll put it on the plastic. Never done that before, but you know, we're doing a bunch of things different today, aren't we? go. Lock tight in there and put my bolt in there. If you're counting how many bolts I'm putting in wrong, just comment how many bolts I, I put in the wrong place. I'm sure I'll get a large number down there. All right. Now I got to go to my hex head. Buried under the muffler. Yeah. Just plastic, gotta be careful. These plastic actually pretty, they hold pretty well, surprisingly. And I'm always the guy that likes to put things way too tight instead of way too loose. And then I end up breaking things and whatnot. That's always fun. Alright, did I put anything together wrong yet? 
No, looks like I'm good so far. Are we going back on the housing now? Yeah, I think we are. That means I gotta clear some junk off the table. Oh, I could tell you a story about junk too. I'll save that for another time because I got a long story about the definition of junk. Well then what did this washer go to? Well this probably went to the Yeah, that's why I probably went to. Alright. Remember this? Because this is the fan side here, because it has the, the weird nut on it that I couldn't get off. Now, in theory, this should go in there like a jigsaw puzzle, but, you know, things don't tend to work. Oh, there it goes. Alright, looks like we got two plastic threads. These bolts here, looks like. These guys are all about the same now. Right, I got two long ones in here. Yeah, they all about, about the same. Alright. So it looks like we got one plastic one here. And another plastic one down here. And those are hex. Screw those down with this guy. No Loctite, because again, these are pretty stiff going in and coming out because it's, you know, plastic. The other one I put it there because, yeah, I know. I feel like that one was more important. Alright. Get my torque wrench out here. Watch out for that flywheel fan. Putting this guy in. Nah, I don't think I can get all the way in there. I'm not taking the flywheel back off. I'm grabbing a driver. Alright, I got a driver. I know, it's a hand tool. Might as well do this one too. All right, now those are plenty tight. It's because I torqued them down. All right. Uh, I'm gonna put this uh, wire back, I guess. Because I don't think we're going to be taking that back out. Don't know what that is there. Maybe that's something that I'm not aware of that I should be. There we go. Our kill is in. Uh, I love this spark plug boot. It's so big. You wanna put the fan on next? Oh, we gotta put the we gotta put those in. Weren't those Torx bolts too? Gotta catch my bearings here. Give me a second. Alright, I found my bolts. It's uh, it's the ones with the those things on them. Should have told me. We found them easier. Eh, you guys probably don't have a memory. No, I mean, you're probably watching this in, you know, 10 minutes I'm doing this in, you know, 
hour and ten minutes. So. And yeah, I'm going to put Loctite on those too because those are metal threaded and they're mounting the engine on so I think those are important. Okay, and I gotta find my Torx socket here. There we go. There we go. I got those back on. The engine ain't falling out now. That's where this comes into play now. Woo woo! Man, I almost blew away. So fast. It's like a uh, hurricane. All those ones that get down in Florida. Ah, yeah, I might put some Loctite on this too. Because a fan always likes to come loose. I learned that over the years. And back on, washer, whatever the heck this is, and, uh, what, what, oh it's left hand threaded, remember that from earlier. This is not, this is pretty stiff. Uh, didn't I have to write it down real hard last time? I think I did. Might have to do that again this time. Oh, I don't want to do that. Yeah, I had to push it down real hard last time. I remember that. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, it's getting tighter. There we go. Now it's on good. Yeah, okay, good. Ay, uh, ay. I guess I can put that shroud right back on, right? Like that. And then this one had all those hex head ones. These guys here, so I gotta put them all in. That's gonna take me a little bit. All right, got her all tightened down. Move you a little bit. There we go. All right, gonna stay up. Alright, well, 
That's where you're going to stay. If you put it around, it's still half apart. Well, I'm going to put the carburetor back on. Because I'm, I'm not cleaning it, maybe, maybe. But not now. Because... Uh... I think the carburetor still works. I have faith that the carburetor is not broken. I don't know, it has one of them stupid accelerator pumps on. And then what did I put on here? Wasn't there two 8 millimeter bolts or something? There's a very convenient place to fuel line, I'll tell you that. Oh, something fell. There we go. I gotta push this back some, because they made this, they do, they made that fuel line a little long. Alright. That's fine. And then I had. Those two go in here. Whoops. I doubt I'm reaching in there. Easy to get out, but probably real hard to get back in, huh? I might have to put some duct tape on a socket. I'm gonna go right in. Don't be <clears throat> don't be dumb like me and start your uh, bolts with an impact. Air cleaner. And this. No Loctite on that. There we go. Alright. Um, I'm going to have to put the trigger in next. Okay, that was easy. I gotta put this in. Now this linkage, I forgot which way it went. My guess would be it went like this. On the, the thing there. Let me raise you up, I can't see anything, huh? See what I'm doing now. All right, so I'm working on this linkage here. It's got to go in like this, and pop in. There you go. Now you see the. So when I pull the trigger, the thing there moves. So really, if I were to just do that, you move this, it would. It's the same thing. If I if the trigger was completely out of here, and I move this, it would rev the leaf blower. Run, run, run. But, uh, you know, because people want to make things easier, they, they conveniently place a trigger right by your, uh, you know, where you, where you hold the leaf blower, right? So, that's, they should make that an option. Extra hundred bucks for the trigger. Alright, now I'm doing the, uh, the shroud, I think that goes on here. Let me know if I'm forgetting anything. Oh, uh, yeah, I know what I forgot. Probably should put the plug in right now because it uh, does not have a very convenient access hole. 
on the shroud, and I'll show you that in uh, five seconds. That plug wasn't in there very tight either. There we go. Put the big boot, put the big boot on there. And see, here's this shroud here. You see, there's hardly any room to get the plug out. That's nuts. Oh, you know what I should have done. I take this out. There we go. Now we got looks like three screws. Yeah, it looks like we got three screws here. And then we got the rewind on here. Oh, you know, you know what else I forgot? Would have been convenient to put this on first, huh? I say that because the shroud that goes under there, that plastic piece, this guy here, the uh, the muffler shroud, whenever I go to put that on, it doesn't uh, work as pro uh, doesn't work because this guy you have to put it on one side first and when you put the other shroud on it goes on with that shroud you want to check to see if the screen's clogged the screen could be clogged too that could be why it's not starting because this is what happens with these leaf blowers too if you run them at idle uh, and you don't ever run it at full throttle for a long time. What happens is there's a screen in here. It's called a spark arrestor screen. So that, you know, when you come off the throttle on the leaf blower, fire doesn't come out of the uh, exhaust. Because, you know, the EPA. And what happens is carbon clogs up this screen. And if you're puffing out exhaust, that carbon will be blocking your exhaust because the uh, exhaust flows through that screen normally, but you know, since it's clogged with carbon, that's not the case. And here's that screen, the little tiny thing there. And it looks, it's, it's clear, it's not clogged at all. So I want to put it back together. I just want to check that just in case because Which way did this go on? Is it like that? That looks funny though. I think. I think, whoa, sorry. I think it was designed to look funny. Not my fault. What they do in the mufflers too is they make it so hard for the exhaust to get out. So it kind of limits your machine a little bit if you were to take the muffler off. It would make it uh, easier for your machine to run because it's, your machine's not only powering, you know, your blower, it's also pushing out the exhaust that it creates. So you have to, you're losing power because the, the, uh, the exhaust you're pushing out takes up some of that power because the muffler has so many passageways in it. So really, it's the EPA's fault. And another reason too, because they run your engines lean because of those screws on the carburetor. Oh, don't get me started on those. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then just, just, just think of me as a, uh, a barking dog that's annoying. That's okay. You can think of me as annoying. I won't take it offensive. And I want to put my Loctite on my bolts for the uh, the um, uh, uh, the muffler because I want the muffler not to come off. 
because I have also seen muffler bolts come loose. And I need that T30 driver here. Okay. And I had a gasket for that. Muffler gaskets always look weird. I couldn't tell you why. I'll get this through there. I guess I'm going to screw it through. That works. Now the bolt comes out. There we go. Yeah, the other bolt's in. You're going to have to take my word for it. All right, and this... There's you up a little bit. There you go. Put this back on the blower, because if not, it's going to sound like a... Ah, uh, you ever... You ever... Uh, Hear a leaf blower without a uh, muffler on it. Sounds like uh, a teenager's car when they pull it out from high school and they're revving it with the exhaust dumps out. I hate those people that make loud noises with their cars because loud doesn't mean fast. I mean, there's cars that make hardly any noise that go really fast. Like that one, and the one behind it. If you're wondering, that's a uh, 1970 GTO Judge there back there. Not mine. Bet you all the comments on this video aren't going to be questions about this Leaf Floor, but questions about that car. <laughs> there we go. And now, for the shroud. Alright. Now I put this shroud back on. Looks like our throttle kind of put a little lube on this just so the trigger goes a little easier there we go trigger should move very fluently now I gotta do some on the bottom there there we go that's just to make the trigger the trigger move a little better oh, sorry I bumped you I gotta pop that switch out because the switch has little barbs on it and the switch, I can't really slide this in with the switch on there. I can, but it's a little difficult for me. So what I like to do is pop that switch out. Oh, there it goes. I'll show you in a second when I get the uh, cover on. Well, on the top there, that switch, there's barbs on it. So you kind of have to push it in rather than uh, slide it in. Oh, that's what I'm doing. Oh, no. no. Never mind. Okay. All right. So you see that switch up there? If I pull it out, there's kind of uh, right there. There's two barbs on the side of it. Same with the other side there. And those kind of, they click in to the, uh, the whole shroud there. And... That's how the switch connects to the shroud. You can't kind of, you can't slide it. You have to push it like that in. Yeah, I'm gonna use a hand tool for this just cause I don't have my bit on and I'm holding it. I'm always worried that these ain't gonna get tight, but they always get tight enough because on the bottom here, there's a little lip that'll get annoying if they don't get tight these, uh, housings here and it's not very comfortable to hold anymore but that's not my problem now because it works good. Alright I got one more. 
I'll just use a hand tool for this too. And yes, these are Torx, but no, these are hex, but I'm using a Torx driver because I don't have hex drivers except for the one on my impact. There we go. All right. Rewind. You know what I want to do now? I want to lubricate this rewind because when I had it all the way out, sometimes the, it was sticking. So I'm just going to go in there and just shoot a little bit of that in there. Maybe if I can get to the spring without taking it apart. Get some down in there. There we go. I'm sorry I didn't get that on camera, but I just sprayed it in between that little gap to get down in the spring there. And it, it works a lot better now. This rewind is a quality rewind, I tell ya. Alright. It goes back on like that. But first, Loctite. Whatever I can get out of my can yet, or my 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 tube. I'm almost out of Loctite. Now this is Torx, so I'm using the right tool for the job here finally. There we go. And don't ask me how I remember all, how all the bolts go back on, but apparently I have this talent that I remember if I take something apart, what the bolts look like and how to get them back on. Let's get this one in and then I'll worry about the rest of them. And for once, I'm not missing any pieces, I say, I'm not missing any pieces, and I don't have extra pieces. That's very rare. Normally I always have extra pieces, or I normally can't find the most important piece of the, uh, the thing, like a head bolt, or a, a cylinder jug bolt. No way I can't find that, but today apparently everything's different, so I found it. You know what? I'm gonna. I'm going to use my impact. There you go. And this one has an easy start too. Feels like it's got a lot more compression than it used to. You know what I want to do? I want to take this spark plug loop back out, if I can get it out, and I want to try a compression test. Because I, didn't, I never did one to start. So I want to see if I can get, I don't think I'm going to be able to, but if I can get this boot off, I'm going to do a test, compression test. Because I didn't do one originally, I want to see how it turned out before I started to see if I got something right or not. I'd assume before it was between 70 and 85. Alright, I'm going to... I guess I'll put this in. 
Now, now I'm not going to check for spark because it was popping over earlier. So I know it has some something. All right, I'm moving to the floor. All right, let's see what we got for compression. I gotta use my right arm. That would be 110. So, I mean, that's not fantastic, but it should be enough to get it running, especially for a leaf blower. So, I'm going to do, well, I'm gonna try to start it, really. There's already gas in it, I'm just gonna use what they have. There's two stroke gas. What do you think? You think we're starting? Let's try it. What hat do I have on? Oh yeah. Prime it. Pre-prime. Give it full choke. Vent to gas. Uh Well, that concludes how to uh, fix your uh, leaf blower with uh, low compression. It could be your piston could be scored up, but the alternative is you have a stuck ring. And, uh, well, that's what we experienced today with this Husqvarna, right? I feel like it's uh, more common on leaf blowers than anything else uh, to have that issue. But, um, well, we fixed it, right? We got it running, and it runs pretty good. Maybe I'll do a car cleaning in the future, but, well, it runs, right? <laughs> That's the most important thing, and it, it, it smoked pretty good. Ah, I love this smoke. Well, anyways, thank you for watching, and uh, stay tuned for the next one. See ya.